Hello guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Diesel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the turbocharger. There are many kinds of turbochargers nowadays, but in general, uh, diesel engines comes with actuators on it. So we're gonna talk about the Volvo D13 turbocharger today on this video. All right, so right now we're gonna check the actuator itself. As you can see, this actuator, all right, has four wires, okay? If there are other actuators that the connection is in the actuator itself, but this one has a harness on it. But the connections, the wires are the same. This one has four wires, power ground and two signals on it and pretty much for all of them are the same lines all right next we have the turbo speed sensor okay this one measures the speed of your turbo it's easy to replace you just remove that 10 screw over there and it's gonna come off and you can see it has two lines yeah so you can get confused which one goes which way because this one has two and the actuator has four wires okay next we have the coolant port all right this one helps the actuator to cool, cool to cool off while it's doing region or you know uh, extreme co heat conditions this helps and also the actuator itself are made from aluminum so you know that material helps to cool even better we have a coolant ports directly to the turbocharger as you can see in here this is one and we have another one down here uh the, the same job coolant helps to you know cool off the act the turbocharger itself in this case uh it is good uh in, in, in general all the turbos with actuator comes with its design. Uh, this is the exhaust side, the inlet exhaust. You know, the exhaust comes in here and moves the propeller, all right? And this design, it has only one hole. There are other design that has two holes. We have the intake propeller in here, the one that comes uh, after the air filter. And that's the way it had to spin all right if you hit the accelerator it's gonna spin faster these turbos can spin up to 50,000 rpms and if the engine is running uh, without the cover from there you should be careful next we have the uh, outlet from the turbo that's the pressure side and you always have to pay attention on that area you should not be cracked or something otherwise it might leak so pay attention to that um, you see this is the exhaust side from the turbo obviously it's black from the suit around there and you see it should be if you're gonna check it out the turbo remember it always has to be really smooth from there in my experience i have seen turbos that that part from the back comes off completely out from the turbo and that's one of the way to say the turbo is gone guys okay now we're going to, need to check it out the bottom part of the turbo in this case uh, Volvo turbos has the oil uh, side in the bottom and as you can see now I'm screwing that uh, fitting over there and you can see one is the pressure side that one and the other big hole is the returning side so as you can see it's it's really simple how Volvo has done this you can see that's the uh, o-ring that holds the pressure line and this it's uh, uh Volvo has one of the most simple simple turbos that i ever seen before if you're planning to repair or rebuild your turbo, uh, you should take off that part that I just showed you 
because they don't need it. And as and always pay attention to the O-rings because you see those are really special O-rings and the one that goes in the return. Uh, that part, if there is any problem with it, uh, you should clean it properly and make sure there is no cracks on it because since that's a, it handles part of the pressure that goes inside the turbo, it's really important you pay attention to, to it. So this is the basic inspection that you can do from the turbo. You can take off the actuator if you want to make sure the road moves smoothly. And remember that if the turbo has any issue just for the electrical part, it might be the actuator or the harness. And if the mechanical problem, it might be the turbo itself. All right, guys. So now, guys, we're going to take a closer look to a turbo without the actuator. This one belongs to a DD engine. And as you can see, it's completely different to the Volvo design. This one, unfortunately, is broken, but it is good because now we can see a little bit inside of the turbo. And uh, Freilander, uh, after Series 60, they came out with this design. You can see over there how the propeller uh, road goes inside there. And this one, unfortunately, had, a, had an accident, the truck, and as you can see, completely cracked the turbo, but that's the way it has to spin. And as you can see, there is a small uh, gap there that measures the how, how fast the turbo is spinning. And other things you can notice right now is there is a lot of oil around, and you know, that's what happens when the turbo breaks this way. But you see, I can still turn it. Um, it was broken already, but uh, if this has a little play in your truck, it means the turbo probably is starting getting bad, guys. If grinding noise is coming out from the turbo, it means probably it's gone. You see, that part should be lubricated all the time. This is the fitting that holds the pressure line. Uh, you can see how small is it, so that it's gonna be well lubricate that's the returning side and yeah you can see clearly over there it's just it's a basic gasket that goes in there uh, this valve in here is the one in charge just to open and close the turbo as much the engine requires it and that blue line you see there it goes to a B part or a turbo controller valve and that's just the road that opens and closes. Because this turbo has no electric actuator, it needs air to work. So air passes through the turbo controller or B pod and opens and closes. Now we're gonna take a look to the back of the turbo. If you wanna return the turbo or rebuild it, you have to get uh, remove that part from there and this is where the seven injector sits and you can see there are two coolant ports in there now we're gonna look inside the uh, turbo the exhaust side but you can see the propeller there but if your truck has problem and there is oil or the propeller is not anymore in there it means it might be inside the SCR box so just to let you know guys this is the heat shell some mechanics remove it, others skip it, it's up to them. And we have the intake uh, exhaust side from the turbo. As uh, you can see, it's completely different from Volvo because it has two holes in it. So this is an overview of this turbo, guys. And now we have the turbo from Cummins. As you can see, the size of this turbo is a little bit bigger than Detroit uh, turbos, but Essentially, it doesn't matter the size, as long as the manufacturer uh, reaches the power output that they need from the turbo, guys. Uh, first of all, we're going to see the actuator in there. And it, if you pay attention, they look exactly the same like in Volvos. That's just the 
coolant ports are in different positions. You can see there, there are different coolant ports. But essentially, it is the same turbo like in Volvos. You can see same two harness, one for the turbo speed sensor and the other one for the actuator. You can see this one has the temperature uh, from the uh, intake in the turbo. Some of them comes with it, other ones don't. Uh, right now, I'm trying to focus if you can see the uh, return. Um, that's for the coolant line. And um, also, you can see the uh, returning line from the turbo. Uh, unfortunately, we can see the pressure line from this side, but this is a basic overview from this turbo, guys just to see how different the manufacturers can build their turbos you can see those are the harness for the turbo speed sensor and the turbo actuator so now we're going to check it out the turbocharger in a26 international as you can see this is a really good step from international with their turbos because you know back in the days with the max force design it was a twin turbo design and a horrible design by the way and let's start checking the temperature sensor that goes before the turbo you know to know the temperature after the engine air filter and this design from international you can see the actuator all right yes, that's the actuator uh but what is interesting about these designs like the road is outside not inside the turbo so let's see how down the road this design goes for international for me it's okay because you can see how the actuator is working without removing it so this is a plus for international i hope uh it really works nicely and it uh, seems like uh pretty easy to change but we'll see you guys uh you can see those are uh, the pressure uh, returning line for the oil uh you can see there's uh it seems easy to remove you not know, like in the other ones with the twin turbos uh the knock sensor in there you see uh pretty basic turbo but it's now it seems like international as I said before, it really, really uh, changed uh, that horrible turbo. So when it comes to turbos, every manufacturer has different ideas how to build them. But what it matters the most to the consumer is how much power output it offers, how much fuel efficient it's, uh, you know, every single trip, because your truck really depends uh, of this part this part is really efficient essential for your needs and also nowadays with the EPA asking for better emissions so this is what I have for you today guys if you have any questions related to the turbo let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next one bye